Good to be here. Thank you very much for this uh, kind of invitation and, and to be allowed to participate in, in a very interesting and very serious uh, development that you are kind of undertaking right now in Australia. I have to say, I just arrived three weeks ago. So I've been here quite a long time and that already now there's a lot of familiar faces in, in the audience. I met a lot of you in a, in a long tour. I've been kind of on a short leash by Taryn Lane from Hepburn Wind. She's kind of pushed me around to, to meet a lot of you. So, you can, so, so I've learned quite a lot about where, you are, where you're from and what you're doing and what you're thinking about, which I think is really great. And it also indicates for me that a lot of you are just like us. And us is Denmark. I'm from Denmark. I'm from a small island in the middle of Denmark. So I came all the way here to see if there was some, any, any relations here we could work on in creating a sustainable community and a movement that would kind of bring us together and make us work in spite of all the problems we also have here. So <clears throat> I'll try to kind of give you a little overview of where I come from. This island is in the middle of Denmark, and we won a competition to be the Danish Energy Island in 1998. It had to be made by proven technology, offshore sales of technology. It had to be made by today's subsidy programs and, and, and framework from the, the government. I have to say that the government those days were very favorable of green energy. We, we came back from Kyoto where we announced that Denmark would cut, cut down 21% of the present CO2 emission, which was pretty brave those days. And it was a signed agreement, we, we needed to do it. But to be able to do it, we needed community to take part of that transition. And thereby, we actually started the, the whole project to be the, the model of energy transition in Denmark. So we had a green policy, and we had actions and, and financing structures, feed-in tariff, and direct subsidies to make that happen. And we started, and 10 years later, to sell it, we, we, we were more than self-supplied by renewables on my little island. We actually reduced our CO2 emission, uh, so we are now carbon negative. We have a minus 3.7 tons emission per capita on my little island. <laughs> so my little story here today to share with you is that a, a community can do this, but we need to find out how we are going to do it and what it takes to change community. It's not an easy job, and a lot of you have been working hard to do that. I've met a lot of you also, and I know how hard you worked to make this transition, and how much it takes to bring people together, to talk about it, to get some action going, to get the financing structures here, to get permissions. I mean, you know it. There's a lot of red tape and a lot of very tough jobs to, to make that happen. So it's about creating community. So what we're doing here is that we are, we are, we are creating what we can call an administration of the commons I don't know if you, were, you use the word commons, but this is what we share. In the, in the old days, it was grassland. And, and the introduction here from the, from the people that, stayed, that was here before and, and now, uh, we can hear that we shared the land in many ways also. So the commons is actually a word for how to share the land. So administration of the commons is then community. Community sharing the commons will then be commodity. What do you think about that? You, you, can, you, can, you can taste it a little bit and, and find out if you like it. I, I think it's a new word we could maybe use to share as, in, in our language. This is my island. You can see it is pretty beautiful. I've been many, many nice places here in, in, in Australia, and I have to admit that you have some really nice places too. But you know, being a, a kind of from a home of, of where I live, I grew up here, I think this is the most beautiful place in the world. What do you think? You probably, you probably think the same about your community. So we, we were about to change that. So what the big discussion is, can we have wind turbines in, in our project? Which I think we do. So this is wind turbines in my land. You can see how beautiful they are. We, in the beginning, we thought having huge, big megawatt wind turbines on our land would kind of make the island kind of flip over. They were big, these installations. We couldn't really see them. We couldn't Im imagine how big they were until we, we actually had them there. And then now we can see they are big, nice structures and they actually work here. The other reason was this is smoke coming out of a coal-fired power plant. I mean, in the 70s and 80s, we, had, we used a lot of beautiful, clean coal from Australia. <laughs> but it, it, it turned out it wasn't, that all, it wasn't all that clean altogether. So we needed, we needed to focus on this. So we need to focus on this. So we said these turbines was our new, they were our new ventilators. So we, we were meant to ventilate the smoke away from the island by having wind turbines there. So, so the image is not 
so much to be producing, but it's actually to take part of this by doing an effort to get rid of the carbon emission. So imagine these are ventilators. So, <clears throat> so what does it take? Well, it, it is not that easy because we are under the same laws as the rest of Denmark. So how do you change the pattern that you already have because, have you, because you are in a, in a paradigm, in a shift kind of. So if you imagine, so if you imagine that, oh, all these knots here. If you imagine this is the regulated, administrated community in general. It's all organized and all structured. Then we are kind of the, the little difference that make, makes kind of the whole island understand. We are part of the big structure, but we're also different. We allow biodiversity. We buy, allow different people here. And how do we do that at the same time we want to make change in general? It's all about climate change, security of, of fossil fuels uh, <clears throat> in history, and changing that because the, the, paradigm, the paradigm is the same. We want to have steady energy. I've heard here, I've seen in the newspapers, that the wind turbines caused the blackouts. <laughs> so who, do, who wants wind turbines if, if, they are, if they are the reason for blackouts? That's not a good idea. But so because this is actually what we're talking about. This is a serious people talking about security supply. And then industry, economy, and jobs is also important. Yes, we want to have jobs. We want to have a life and go home and, and have a salary we can pay the bills with. So this is the challenge. The, the New Deal is to be independent from this. Where does my broad, bread and butter come from, and who are we on my island in 2030? So it's kind of a vision quest about how do we pave the way to where we want to be in, in 10 to 20 to 30 years' time? How, how, do we make that, I kind of, how do we make that work? In the old days, it was about energy. So Earth first, and then we'll drill the other planets later. We, there's always a solution, we'll find other resources and then we'll just head on with the same structure that we always had here. I mean, that's easy. That's what we have done until now. There's a solution at the end of the road, but it's kind of a short-sighted one. So, <clears throat> to make a change in that, because that's where the big industry, where, where, the, where the big money is. So you guys, I saw how many of you stood up when you talked about local communities and, and how to be active in the local community. This, this is you here. On behalf of the community, all you guys who work in community development, you have a lot of meetings, a lot of responsibility, very little backup, declining memberships because, I mean, it's tough to stay on that route and be engaged, possible position of a chair for the organization because nobody else wants to have that position. <laughs> they know how, how, much, how big a job it is. A strong position for own ideas, yes, because all the other guys, they keep quiet when it's at, at the yearly election to have the new steering committee and access to limited resources. Is that your situation? And you're still on it. Everybody's not, and you're still on it, and you crazy people, what are you doing here? <laughs> this is the ridiculous way of, of making a, fut a future career uh, also to do this also. But this is what it takes, and this is what it's taken also for our community to go where we are today. These are volunteer people who work really hard to make this change, like you do. So I uh, maybe, maybe you should appreciate that, kind of let's, Say thank you. I really know how tough it is. So these are the pioneers. This turbine here is one of the first megawatt turbines in the world. It was actually the biggest turbine in the world. It was made by volunteer engineers and workers in Denmark in the 70s. And it was up and running. It's still running. We keep it now as a museum artifact. This is a token of, of pioneers that actually made that work. They actually made the fiberglass place in a shed behind the school where they, they built it. And this turbine is kind of the, the this is the mother of all turbines in, in modern times in, the, in Denmark. It came from a history of turbines also in the old days. You had the old mills, and then you had kind of tech, technology developed mills that, that didn't really work, but this one worked. And actually this, the structure of it is the same as you see in modern wind turbines. This was up and running very early. Um, in, in Denmark by people here. Why? Well, because they wanted to. They had to. They couldn't avoid it. They just wanted to make this change and wanted to see it happen because they were driven by the same kind of energy and, 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 and eager to make change as you as I have seen here also. How do we do it? Well, what, ha what happens is that we bring people around the, t the, the idea, the burning platform or the idea of change. We bring people together and sit down and talk about it. It takes a lot of meetings before you feel comfortable about, about this. Can we do it? Is it possible? How do we do it? Who is going to be here? Who do we need to be around the table to make it happen? 
because if we are just a bunch of hippies, not, I mean, we, we can talk forever and drink a lot of tea, that's fine, or coffee or whatever we drink, but we need also to, to bring in the business guys and the, and the engineers and the people who can make this change also in practice, so we can kind of make a bigger family, we can enlarge the practitioners with, with the idealistic people and make it happen. I think that is really important. So ownership is interesting. Well, this is offshore wind turbines from my island. They, when we built them, they were the biggest windmills in the world. And that was undertaken by 4,000 people who live on my island. That's pretty brave. That was one of the biggest investments we ever made. In total, we actually invested 75 million Australian dollars in energy transition in 10 years, shared by 4,000 people. Isn't that cool? Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> but it was made not because we are particularly rich, but it was made because we have a, a green policy. We've had a green policy for many years that helped people in a framework where Denmark said, we want to be 100% independent from fossil fuels by 2050. And we want to do it step by step by giving feed-in tariff and net metering arrangements, stuff like you also have here, but actually keep it on a steady policy because we, we, we wanted to have energy coalitions where, where different governments would follow the same route that was laid out several years ago. So we'd have long-term energy policy because it's really dangerous if you have short-term like election periods and the next government will change the policy. I don't know, is that what's happening here? So, so you will not, you don't feel satisfied, you don't feel comfortable of making these investments because you fear that the government will change the conditions for you in, in a very short time. So the short time policy is making you unhappy about what you, what you actually aim to do. So long time policy helped us to do this. So the gov local government on my island ha owns five turbines. We have three company owned and two cooperative owned. So we have about 1,500 people who own shares in the wind turbines out here. And they are up and running and they do a, a really good job, these turbines. So we can also do it because we have a decentralized structure. I've learned that what happens when you shut down a big coal-fired power plant, then you, you'll have a very unreliable energy system. That's not good, who wants that? <laughs> South Australia. So, so we, have more, we have almost 50% wind power in the Danish total energy mix here. We have shut down most of our coal-fired power stations. We have a decentralized structure that is actually working. We never have blackouts. So come on, I mean, today we can actually do this. Of course, you have a different structure. You have the longest power system in, in I think, maybe in the world on the East Coast. Here. So, it, so it's a big job to change this. But the problem is that the change has to be done to meet the new technologies. So the change can actually absorb the energy. So this is a Danish energy mix where we have all the producers feeding into the same power grid. And, and this is administrated by a central organization who can actually do this. So it works, this is in other words. So this is the job. Here we have the, here we have the local mayor. Here we have the local energy resource. And here we have the present energy consumption. So maybe we can make a poll here also say what's wrong with this picture. <laughs> pa apparently there's, the consumption is way too big according, um, when we compare it with the, with the production capacity or the resources here. So what do we do to make kind of a better balance here? Well, the mayor could decide to pump more oil to, to burn more coal in other ways. Bring the donkey down on the road again and get some forward traction, which will make this thing here break. This is actually maybe the climate that's right here. But what we should do is to make energy efficiency. By new modern technologies, we can actually cut down 30%, 20-30% to of our present energy cons uh, consumption without any kind of really serious impact. We wouldn't even feel it. But it takes, it takes kind of changes in building codes and how you make your houses, how the whole structure is organized. Because we have been used to have too much energy for, at a too low price, which means that we haven't really organized our society so we can actually change this. So what does it take? It takes reliable policy. Do you have that? Okay. It takes brave politicians. Do you have those? It takes long oh. it takes long term framework and targets, reasonable budgets, bankable projects, so you can all be involved in the project and feel safe about investing it. It takes local individual action plans and strong community networks. So this is what we're working for. So good job, all of you who are engaged in this already, because this is what it takes for many communities to engage themselves and do develop. Because it's all about bread and butter. We want to live here. We want to have a good relation with the land, 
and, and the production that comes out of the land, we can do it and work with it in a sustainable way. This is what we're aiming for. It's not kind of some rocket science, scientific uh, development, but, but a, a balanced, sustainable living we, we are after. So what it takes is crazy people like me. Do you have somebody like this around you? I think so. I met a lot of you already, and I can see some familiar faces down here who probably is as crazy as I am, because it takes some, some what I call guts to stand up for this and make this change work. <clears throat> and then it will work at the end of the day. So my feeling is after three weeks of visiting many, many rural communities in your country is that you are well on the ways and I wish you luck and I hope that this will be kind of an innovative hub, innovative hub of transformation. And you can lead it if you really set off to do it. But you have to ask your politicians to give you the right policy to make it happen. Thank you very much.